Hello, this is Scott and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to create a VPN server for your LAN. A lot of you all probably use a public VPN service to make a connection from a desktop machine to a VPN server. We're going to take this a step further. We're going to show how to create a gateway server that is connected to a Nord VPN server. This server will route all traffic that uses it to an established VPN connection. This server will be installed on an Ubuntu 18.04 server on your LAN. The VPN gateway address can be used on individual systems that you want to have always connected to a public VPN server. And this is useful for systems that are either inconvenient to run a VPN client on or that there's no VPN client available for the device. Example is a lot of IoT devices. Right offhand, I can think of a Roku as being a good example because it can't run programs, can only connect to channels. So this project will use NordVPN, but you could be, it could be modified to use another public VPN service. So what do we need? Well, we need an account on NordVPN or another VPN service. We need a test machine where you can manually set the gateway address to the VPN server address. And we're going to install this project on Ubuntu 18.04 virtual machine with two virtual CPUs, 2048 megabytes of memory or two gigs of memory and a 25 gigabyte virtual hard drive. I did try to install this on a, um, on a LexD instance and I was unsuccessful because it, there were some kernel features that I had to use that weren't immediately accessible. And also I had tried it on an Ubuntu 2004 machine, but I ran into some problems. So this project uses port 1194, which is the OpenVPN protocol port number, and you must use a UDP public VPN profile to make your connection. Only UDP port 1194 is routed to the WAN and so if the connection happens to be down or the VM happens to be down, no traffic is passed to the WAN uh, on the nodes that are defined to use your VPN gateway. So here we are logging into my static virtual machine addressed at 172.16.30.30 for the first time. Providing my password. And we're logged in. So this is an 18.04.6 Ubuntu server. First thing that we want to do out here is we are going to install OpenVPN. So we're going to do a sudo apt install OpenVPN. Next, we want to cd over to slash etsy slash openvpn. And we're going to go out and get the NordVPN configuration files. Next, we're going to install unzip. And we're going to unzip the files. Next, we're going to edit a connect script. You're going to pick your own VPN server, which you will list in here with the country code followed by the number. In my particular case, I'm picking one that's close by me, but your requirements might be different. After that, I'm going to go edit an authorization or create an authorization file. And this is going to be called in the Etsy directory, OpenVPN 
auth.txt. And you're going to put in your username, or you're going to put in your, your VPN username. So username at, I don't know, mail.com, and then your password on a separate line. And then you're going to go ahead and save that file out. Now we're going to edit a file that is called slash Etsy slash OpenVPN slash IP tables dot SH. It's going to be a script. I'm going to copy all the files for this script. And paste them into the editor session. Now, I want to scroll up here, and something important you're going to need to change are these two lines for communicating with your local network. And the first thing you're going to want to change, well, you're going to change all four of these addresses down here. In my particular case, I'm using 172.16.0.0 with a subnet mask of 16 because that's my address for my local area network. You're going to want to change that. Um, typical local, local area networks might be something like 192.168.1.0 with a subnet mask of 24. In any case, you're going to change all four of these addresses to whatever the address range for your network is. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and save the file. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to enable IP address forwarding in Ubuntu. And you're going to do that with this command. <clears throat> Very important. Now, to test whether or not this works, you can go ahead and launch this connect script by first of all launching the iptables.sh and secondly by launching the connect script. And if the last line that comes out is initialization sequence completed, then you know you've made a connection. And if you look up in the list here, you should also be able to see the address that you're connected to on your uh, VPN provider. In my case, it connected to this address right here, which is 2.56.190.12. And that's the VPN connection it's made. Okay, so you can actually go out and test this by getting another machine and making a change to its gateway. Um, we're going to do that once we're completely done. But in this case, I know this worked. So I'm going to go ahead and do a control C. It'll end out of this script. Now I'm going to create a service so that every time the system runs, it will go ahead and create that connection. We're going to want to edit the following file slash etsy slash systemd slash system slash rc dash local dot service we're creating a new file there and in that file we want to define the service that we're going to use to be able to start our connection and that is what goes in the file these will all be in the show notes save that file out and now we want to create a RC local script. We're going to do a sudo nano slash etsy slash rc dot local. And in that file, we want to put the following. And we save that out. Change that file to have execute privilege. And then we're going to
enable the service so that it happens on each reboot and we're going to start the service and if all's well we should receive a command prompt Okay, I've rebooted my uh, VPN gateway server, the VM, and it's right up here, sitting, waiting. And right now down here, I have a terminal open to my local machine. And if I say, uh, if I say curl, if config dot me, that will give me my WAN address. If I come up here, and go to the IPv4 settings on my wired connection and set the connection to manual and type in 172.16.1.225 which is my current local area address for my machine and I type in my net mask of 255.255.0.0 and I make my gateway instead of the one my DHCP server sets me I give it 172.16.30.30 which is the address of the VPN gateway so now if I do the curl command it is returning the 2.56.190.13 address it took a little bit longer to actually come back with that but that's, uh, that shows that we're using the VPN gateway as our gateway. And this is the address of the Nord server out there, uh, which happens to be up in Dallas. And so this machine is connected through that. Okay, so another valuable feature of having this gateway set up is the fact that we can do a ping of Amazon.com from my local machine which is using this particular address you can see it's returning an address on AWS for Amazon and if I come up here to the VPN gateway server and I stop the service you will see that once I put in my password you will see that the ping freezes in other words you don't have to worry about in the event that the service goes down you don't have to worry about um, your traffic moving unsecured since the VPN is not up. And if we turn around and we start the service again, take a little while to start. And once the service starts up, you'll see that the pings resume down here. So in summary, this project was strongly influenced by an Ubuntu forums post from 2018. And if your VPN gateway server is installed on a dedicated VLAN, the DHCP address for that VLAN could be the VPN gateway server, which would result in all servers on that VLAN being connected to the public VPN automatically. And then systems that use the VPN gateway will not communicate on the WAN unless the VPN gateway server is up, running, and connected. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time.